You see them lurking around every job site. Lifting. Poking. Pulling. Who are these people and what do they do? Inspection is, is important for both the quality of the product and to see too that the owner is getting what they're paying for. I think that uh, there would be some quality control problems that sometimes people will get in too much of a hurry and they build things without assuring that they're doing them correctly and they worry about time more than the quality of their work. Some of the things that you know, could go wrong if you didn't have someone testing the materials, uh, they would water the concrete down uh, pr um, a little bit too much and then it wouldn't have the structural integrity that it really does need. That's right, from inspectors for a state highway authority to quality control technicians for contractors, these people play a vital role in assuring quality in the placement and finishing of concrete. If you're an inspector like the ones we've just seen, pay close attention because in this video, you're going to learn about the importance of the role of the inspector, quality control technician, or even field engineer, and how to perform concrete placement inspections. First, we'll review what you need to check before concrete arrives at the job site. We'll then highlight things to see when the concrete arrives. Finally, we'll walk through the proper placing, consolidating, finishing, jointing, and curing practices. There are critical pieces in the design that must be rigidly followed. As the inspector, it's your job to check what's being built against what the architect and engineer have specified in the contract documents. Your role may also include quality control. Is there a difference, you ask? You bet. Inspection is what you do when you check what's built in the field against plans, specs, and codes. But concrete can be acceptable according to the contract documents and still lack quality. For example, this concrete met the strength specified but it was improperly consolidated and finished. Improper practices like this affect the quality and durability of the concrete. Contract documents may not spell out what quality concrete is, so this requires that you know about proper concrete practices. Today, we'll cover things to check in the plans and specs, and then also proper practices that you'll need to know that affect concrete quality that may not be in the specs. On the day of concrete placement, arrive before those ready-mix trucks and pumps start rolling onto the job site. You'll want to make some last-minute checks before the concrete arrives. At the subgrade, make sure it's still clean of debris, well compacted and moist. Ensure it's neither too dry nor too wet. A dry subgrade will absorb water from the mix, causing plastic shrinkage cracks. A subgrade with standing water will increase the water-cement ratio of the mix, decreasing the hardened concrete strength and durability. Most of the time, when you have a subgrade that's got standing water on it, you just need to double check the subgrade. Uh, if it's still good and tight, you can try to get most of the water off the subgrade. If it's not and still mushy, then you have to hold your placement off until you can do remedial work on the subgrade itself. If there's a vapor barrier, it needs to completely cover the placement area should be adequately overlapped and should have no holes in it. At the formwork, look to see it's still clean. At the proper elevation, tight and covered with a release agent to make form removal easier. If you're checking formwork, typically you're also checking rebar in there. You're checking the spacing between the formwork and the rebar. That's probably the key thing that you check. Uh, the formwork itself, if they use the form too many times, the wood may be blistering, there may be some old splattered concrete left on the form which would then leave an indentation in the concrete when you strip the forms. Looking at the rebar, you should have previously checked for proper depth, cover, size, grade, length and lap splicing. At this time, is it still clean and secure?
As the concrete arrives, check the batch plant delivery tickets carried by the ReadyMix truck drivers. It may sound silly, but mistakes occur, and ReadyMix trucks with the wrong concrete mix can be sent to a job site. On a project this size, uh, it wouldn't be that unusual for the wrong mix to arrive. We've got maybe seven to nine different mix designs for a given location, uh, for di given different locations. And if you're placing uh, concrete for one structure, it might have been uh, designed for another structure. You're going to want to get that straight. For example, pumped concrete for this high-rise slab will certainly be different than the concrete for these vertical columns. Also, check the time the truck left the ReadyMix plant. Has the driver come straight to the job site? Sometimes they'll uh, get one and, and uh, maybe he didn't have breakfast that morning. You know, he'll stop and eat breakfast, which don't happen very often, but I have had it happen. And he'll get there uh, in the concrete's already an hour and a half old, and he's just pulling on site. Concrete must be placed within one and a half hours after batching or before the drum has revolved 300 revolutions, whichever comes first. In hot weather, this time may be specified to be much shorter. During placement, the temperature, slump, and air content of the mix will need to be measured and recorded. Is the testing technician on time, and does he have all the equipment needed? Having all your materials and the logistics of this job is absolutely important. Pens, pencils, reports, notepads and, and, and your, your plans, you know, you got to have everything with you, your cylinders, uh, you leave something, you have to go all the way back out to another site, so it's just, you know, common sense to make sure that you have all the appropriate equipment uh, with you at all times. You may not be required to run the test, but you'll want to watch the technician carefully. They first send a technician out, if I know he's going to be out there the whole length of the project, he's going to be the only one there. I watch him the first two or three times to make sure he's performing the test correctly. I'm looking for him running the test correctly. I'm looking for him to have all his equipment like he should, you know, on site and, and clean. Uh, I'm looking for him to just to have the attitude that he knows what he's doing. ASTM C94 is a commonly referenced job spec and requires that temperature, slump, and air content be checked at least once for every 150 cubic yards of concrete placed unit weight tests used to check the yield and air content, and cylinders to test compressive strength should also be made at this time. Now that we've looked at an overview of inspections, job specs will list tolerances or acceptable ranges for things you'll be inspecting during concrete placement. If an inspection falls out of the acceptable range or fails, always document it and report it to the authority you represent. As we get into concrete placement, pay close attention. A common but improper practice you may encounter is the act of adding water to the mix. You start seeing indiscriminate uh, amounts of water added, just adding 20 gallons just because they want a flowable mix that they can put down a lot easier and go home. You're going to want to put a stop to that. That's uh, not good judgment. It's not good for the concrete. We're not going to make that soupy to make his job easier. He's going to have to place it and finish it the way it's called for in the specs. You should know that a concrete mix is designed to achieve a certain strength. And this strength is largely based upon the water-cement ratio. The lower the water content, the higher the strength. When water starts being added to the mix, the strength and durability of the hardened concrete is decreased. Remember this, water is permitted to be added only once at the job site, and only if the results of a slump test show the slump is lower than the one specified. The water must be added into the mixer only and the drum must be turned an additional 30 revolutions. If you see water being improperly added to the mix, always document and report the incident. Notify the contractor about water, but understand it's his authority about what to do. 
he'll make the call whether he wants to use the concrete or not. I really don't make the final decisions, I just make recommendations to the contractor and he makes the final decisions. Whether concrete is placed by hand as shown here in this driveway, or pumped at this multi-story building, by the time it reaches these workers, it's full of air voids that must be removed. While an unconsolidated mix may still meet its specified strength, voids can leave honeycombing affecting the concrete's appearance and quality. Consolidation by vibration will help remove air voids that get entrapped during the batching, mixing and transporting process. Vibration techniques must be correct for proper consolidation. As far as I know, you're supposed to put it in slowly and take it out slowly so you don't generate air pockets in there. Consolidation techniques will not be clearly spelled out in the job specs, so here's what to watch for. First, the correct size and amplitude vibrator should be used based on the aggregates in the mix and the slump. The vibrator should be inserted vertically and held in one location long enough to bring air voids to the surface but not so long that the mix starts to segregate. The circle of influence from one insertion point to the next should just overlap. Well, anytime you put a, a vibrator down into the mix, it's only going to have, uh, it's going to have a limited zone of influence. The vibration and the consolidation will only occur for, through a specific area and volume. He's going to want to make sure he gets close enough to the, uh, to the zones of influence overlap each other and that we have solid, good consolidated concrete throughout the mix and not just in places. If concrete is placed in lifts, it must also be consolidated in lifts. Now, just because you see vibrators used in concrete doesn't necessarily mean that they're being used properly. Improper techniques may look something like this. Dragging the vibrator across the surface, as shown here, attempts to move the concrete horizontally from one place to another and a sort of fly fishing maneuver is sometimes used. Additionally, during placing and consolidation, the depth of the concrete needs to be monitored. There are several methods for depth measurement. In this case, a laser device is being used to calculate concrete depth from the bottom of the forms to the top of the forms. Ensure that the depth of the concrete is being measured during placement. Now, if welded wire fabric is being used for reinforcement, check for proper handling. There are potential problems in its use. Major problem with welded wire fabric is when they pour the concrete, it tends to get pushed to the bottom of the slab pour. Uh, a contractor will typically put a few stirrups underneath it, and then when they walk on it, it gets crushed to the bottom. The normal response you'll get is, well, we'll lift it up. When the concrete's wet in place, we'll walk back over it and pull the wire back into the center of the mat. It's not something I like. To avoid some of the potential problems Richard has identified, welded wire fabric must be supported and secured on chairs to be effective and acceptable. Once concrete is placed and consolidated, it's ready for finishing and jointing. Knowing what to watch for is critical because the how-tos of finishing won't be spelled out in the specs. Generally, allowable surface tolerances for the hardened concrete will be listed in the specs, but there's more to know for quality control. Soon after the concrete is struck off, initial finishing begins with bull floating to smooth and level the surface. After bull floating, water in the mix will rise or bleed to the surface. This bleed water is normal and expected and must evaporate before final finishing begins. If finishers don't wait until bleed water evaporates, here's where a lot of good concrete can go wrong. If you get on it and start the troweling process or the uh, power floating process, you're going to start sealing the surface up and uh, there's too much water at the surface, it's gonna stop the bleeding process, it's gonna seal that up, and we're gonna get some uh, delamination of the surface. I think that one of the arts to finishing is knowing when to get on the concrete. Get on there too early, uh, the bleed water hasn't come out, you're gonna be uh, smearing it on the surface and generating a, a sort of flaky finish that's likely to come off. 
The results are similar to workers adding water to the surface of the concrete to make it more workable. This practice is unacceptable. To avoid surface defects, ensure that workers wait for the bleed water to evaporate before beginning final finishing and that no water is added to the surface during finishing. While waiting for bleed water to evaporate, crews may joint an edge. Concrete needs joints because as it cures and loses water, it shrinks. Joints are placed to prevent random cracking that results from shrinkage. Joints are specifically designed for a structure and will be detailed on the plans and specs as to where they must be located and how deep they must be. As a rule of thumb, they must be at least one quarter the slab thickness. They can be tooled during finishing or saw cut the very next day before random cracking begins. Once concrete has been properly placed, consolidated, finished and jointed, it must be cured. Curing protects concrete from drying out too fast until it reaches its design strength. You'll see many different types of curing depending on job specs. A chemical compound is being applied to these curbs in the summer. Burlap and plastic are the curing method of choice for this bridge deck. But if you encounter burlap as a curing method, make sure it's kept wet either with a sprinkler or plastic. It works good if you put weeper hoses on the top, you know, and, and just keep it moist. But I have seen them where something will come up, uh, somebody shut a hose off and...